Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Maria Altieri. I'm a resident at Stony Brook University Hospital. I would like to thank the program committee for the opportunity to present our data here today. We have no relevant disclosures. Uh, so as we've already heard, laparoscopic cholecystectomy is a commonly performed procedure with over 750,000 cases being performed annually in the United States alone. It has gained popularity mainly because of its advantages such as reduced cost, increased patient satisfaction, and decreased hospital length of stay. Although it's considered a relatively uh, safe procedure, major comorbidity still occurs in approximately 5% of the cases. Common bowel duct injury or CBD injury remains a dreaded complication. Even though it has decreased since um, laparoscopic cholecystectomy was first introduced, si uh, literature cites between 0.08 to 0.5% incidence. In addition, it is associated with significant morbidity and mortality. Thus, prevention of this complication is of high importance, and strategies of minimizing these complications are top priority for general surgeons. The use of routine interoperative cholangiogram um, for prevention of CBD injury is controversial, as some, of, uh, some state that it can provide valuable information about biliary anatomy, while others are citing cost and increased length, uh, length of procedure. In addition, some people consider it a technically challenging procedure. So the purpose of our study was to evaluate uh, whether now that the laparoscopic uh, cholecystectomy has been established, uh, what are the rates of intraoperative cholangiogram? In addition, what are the trends of complication rates, in, including CBD injury? So for this purpose, we use the SPARCS database, which is a longitudinal New York statewide database. It collects information from all ED visits, in addition to ambulatory cases and inpatient cases. So we identified through the use of ICD-9 and CPT codes, laparoscopic cholecystectomy procedures for both benign, obstructive, and non-obstructive, and this, uh, the time period was 2000 to 2014. We looked into outcomes such as patient demographics, comorbidities, trends such as incident of uh, intraoperative cholangiogram, complications, 30-day readmission, 30-day complication, and the rate of CBD injury. Oops. A uh, log linear Poisson regression model with year as an explanatory variable were used, in addition to multivariable logistic regression um, in examining the linear trend of complication risk, readmission risk, ED visit risk, uh, CBD injury among all phalangiogram patients. P-values less than 0.05 were considered significant. So we found that there were over 400,000 uh, procedures that were being performed between 2000 to 2014. That was a 15-year period. And when we examined all inpatient laparoscopic cholecystectomy with, performed with intraoperative cholangiogram, we saw a de decreasing trend. However, that was not significant for the inpatient population. When we looked into the use of intraoperative cholangiogram in the outpatient laparoscopic cholecystectomy, there was a trend, a significant uh, decrease in the use of intraoperative cholangiogram, with total laparoscopic cholecystectomy actually decreasing in the state of New York uh, over the, the 15 years. Uh, when the rate of the incidence of uh, intraoperative cholangiogram being used was between 0.9 or 9% to about 14%. In the same time period, uh, major complication rates increased, and that was significant. In addition to 30-day readmissions um, for laparoscopic cholecystectomy and hospital length of stay when laparoscopic cholecystectomy was performed remained the same. At the same time, uh, during any uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, the CBD injury uh, incidence actually increased and the CBD injury um, rate during laparoscopic cholecystectomy when performed with IOC also increased, and that was statistically significant. When we examined um, explanatory variables for CBD injury, age about 65, in addition to inpatient procedure, were risk factors for CBD injury. So based on these findings, we concluded that there is a concerning increase of CBD injuries in patients with and without intraoperative cholangiogram between 2000 to 2014 in the state of New York, uh, and the rate of intraoperative cholangiogram has significantly decreased. Thus, routine intraoperative cholangiogram and the time of laparoscopic cholecystectomy may help early identification and potentially decrease the rate of 
bile duct injuries. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Taizo Hibi. Very well designed investigation. Congratulations. Um, my question is, uh, did you have any chance to look into the reason why the, the incident, uh, the, the performance rate of IO, um, intraoperative cholangiogram fell significantly? Because um, maybe more and more uh, doctors were more comfortable using like MRCPs, other modalities. Um, and do you have any explanations for that? So we actually looked into the ERCP rate afterwards, and it actually decreased as well. However, that kind of makes sense because now MRCP exists, and a lot of people after laparoscopic cholecystectomy will um, go to MRCP and then possibly ERCP. Um, the reason why it might have decreased, it might have uh, just the, the, comfort, the comfort level of people actually not, not performing IOC and thinking that if there's any question, they can go through ERCP or MRCP route. And that's uh, some, something that It was also problem. very surprising to see the, the, actually the rise of the, um, the, the biological injury rate. And, um, but I think we still should be very cautious to, if there's any direct correlation, correlation between um, intraoperative cholangiogram and biological injury. And um, how, how do you cor correlate? Do you think you should do a cholangio a cholangiogram for all patients or in selected patients? Do you have any? That's a very good question, yeah. actually. Um, I don't think that you should perform intraoperative cholangiograph for every single, in every single case. It should be performed in selected case, as selected case, and yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you for your lecture. Uh, I'm Dr. Zhuang from Taiwan. Actually, uh, my question is the same with uh, this doctor. Uh, because uh, we all know the purpose of uh, intraoperative cholangiogram maybe for to identify the, uh, the anatomy of the bile duct. Sometimes we, uh, we want uh, to uh, find out if, if there is any uh, common bile duct stone. So I, I think in this study, do you uh, separate the, the purpose of the cholangiogram? Because sometimes uh, if the ERCP or MRCP, they can exclude the, the common bile duct stone. So the, the trend of the IOC will decrease. This is my first question. Uh, the second one is, uh, actually, I'm very surprised of, uh, about the uh, result of the uh, common bile duct injury uh, rate uh, rise uh, uh, in these years. But uh, uh, do you think it is uh, necessary any correlation between this and the, the IOC rate? And if you, uh, because in your conclusion, you, you think the, uh, the, the correlation between the, bit, uh, between the decrease of the IOC rate and the increase of bile duct injury rate. So, so uh, how uh, do you to uh, make this conclusion? And uh, if you want to increase the IOC rate, what is your uh, recommendation? Thank you. So for the qu first question, um, you, because it's an, that's a Good question, but uh, because it is an administrative database, so the purpose of why the intraoperative cholangiogram was performed, you can't give a reason, and that's one of the limitations of the study. I'm not quite sure what you meant by your second question. I'm sorry. Uh, um, anybody? No, actually, the, 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 I mean, the, 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 how do you to confirm the correlation between the decreasing IOC rate and the increasing bile duct injury rate? Well. So one hypothesis is that even when we are not um, sure about the anatomy, uh, people will not go through the intraoperative cholangiogram. It might, might be just because they don't want to spend the time on it. Um, and that might be a reason why we're actually making these mistakes. Now, we do have new technologies on, such as uh, uh, ICG that mm -hmm. can potentially help with that. But, um, exactly. Yeah. Very good. You mentioned it. Uh, do you have any questions? Thank you. Um, Victor Maciel from Miami. Quick question for Dr. Arregui. Based on this um, data, it looks like the territory may be ripe for being, um, for doing more intraoperative ultrasounds. I would like your opinion on that. Maybe we should be doing more of, of that. Well, there, there are a couple of things I'd like to say. I need a little clarification. So these, there were injuries, bile duct injuries, even when they had intraoperative cholangiogram. Yes. But do we know if the cholangiogram was done before the injury or was it done after? Is that? So you can't say you can't exactly. Say. So we really and don't it's know. possible that some of these were actually that you noted that there was an injury mm -hmm. and you performed mm -hmm. it because of that reason. Yeah. 
um, but still there is this trend that shows that we are performing less mm -hmm. intraoperative cholangiograph and the rate at New York is approximately like 10 percent <coughs> which it's not a significant I mean it's not a, a pretty high number of, and I'm sure that there is a lot of gallbladder there are pretty difficult but, so you want to ask the audience how many perform routine IOC raise your hands we have not that many. <laughs> so well, I, I do want to make a comment. I don't do intraoperative cholangiograms, but I do intraoperative ultrasound uh -huh. all the time, 100% of the time. And I think it does make a difference. Uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to both. The advantage of doing ultrasound is you have a unit there, and just about every surgeon is doing ultrasound now uh, and, and for some reason or another. And so it's fairly easy. It takes very little time. You interpret it immediately. You know, and I think it's a safety factor. Uh, doesn't preclude getting an injury if it's a difficult dissection or if there's an altered anatomy, but I think it really reduces the risk. But I think it, I, I, I am seeing a very uh, significant trend toward not doing intraoperative cholangiography. And it's been pointed out in the first uh, uh, presentation by Dr. Franklin, there are a lot of variants on anatomy yeah. and uh, a lot of disagreement on the, the critical uh, uh, view. So I think, uh, uh, I personally think that we need to trend back a little bit toward doing more intraoperative cholangiography or ultrasound to, to do it because the rates are not going down. Uh, in fact, the, I believe the training is less than we had in the past. Residents are not getting exposed to the same number, the same complexity. So uh, uh, we're, uh, we're not seeing a trend for the better, so something's wrong. I agree. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so much.